So guys, welcome to the lesson of today. Um, what I want to talk is about blast beats, but in a different way. What I want to talk about is the differences of the blast beats and why and where did they came from. I mean, it, it can really sound weird for so many people to understand why this blah, 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 blah is happening. And I want to, to explain you, you know, why and what happened exactly and what is a blast beat and when it started. Okay, first of all, we have to understand the period. We are talking about the grindcore craft scene in the middle of the 80s, okay? So, at this period, uh, bands like Napalm Death and Carcass from England, they were trying to shock the world, you know, with lyrics about, you know, autopsy, uh, about politics, about, you know, all the weird stuff happening in, uh, happening in the world. So they were, you know, actually like uh, screaming like nobody else. They were trying to make the most noise possible out of the, the music. So in the beginning, the blast beat was a kind of um, was a kind of I would say a kind of expression of noise. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to do it. They wanted to make noise. <laughs> this is interesting because it's uh, it's music made for revolution. It's not music made for people, you know. In the uh, hanging out and drinking cocktails. It's music made for people, you know, going at the show and killing themselves for the music. So in the beginning, the first, the first kind of blast beats, they were not, nothing really in time. I mean, they just tried to do more notes in less time possible. That's the point. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do, just go fast and... <laughs> Especially with the China, this is the beginning. I mean, I, I don't care about... Yeah, We're talking about, you know, this kind of really extreme music. What happened? You know, people started to do this all over, all over. Before, before the blast beat, there was the revolution of the skank beat. The skank beat is like... This, this beat comes from the... The next step was made by Pete Sandoval. Now it's... Pete is playing with Morbid Angel, but at the time he, he was playing with a band called Terrorizer. And this is in 1989, you know. The band Terrorizer made out a CD called World Downfall. And for the first time, you can hear a blast beat that is, has a metrical sense. Pete's blast beat was this, actually, slowly. The important thing it has to be noisy and it has to be done with one foot only. Why? Because when Pete Sandoval started to play drums, he was a big fan of Clive Barr from Iron Maiden. And Clive Barr uses only one kick and one bass drum. So he wanted to be like the Clive Barr of the grindcore scene and he wanted to play with one foot only. So it was unbelievable for the time, you know. A blast beat done with a metrical sense. This is interesting. So because basically what he did was taking out a note from the skank beat. Okay. Then doubling it, okay? This is very cool, because suddenly everybody started to play this way. And it was a, a very big revolution. So the, the blast beat became a rhythm and not a kind of a a senseless noise. We must say something before because there is a big argumentation about who was the first guy who made a blast beat. Some people say that uh, Charlie Benante did. Charlie Benante is a drummer from Anthrax who was playing with a band called S.O.D. Stormtroopers of Death. It's a band with Billy Milano. It's a very crazy band. And actually he was also doing a kind of a blast beat in a song. You know, very weird, it, it, uh, you can hear it. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the name of the song. You will read it here when I be back home and check it, so I'll be sure. And Charlie was playing a kind of a, a blast beat. It was very noisy. I, I would say like, uh, it, it looks in the CD, you can hear really a, a messy, not, not like in the nape on that stuff, but it's kind of... Something like that. Also, metrical, n not so much, but also not such, such noisy. This thing inspired, this is very funny, a song of S.O.D. 10 years later or 20 years later. The song is called Charlie Don't Cheat. 
And this song talks about Charlie Benante, who was the first guy playing a blast beat with a wrist. And the song say, it's funny, the song says, be a man and play with your wrist, not with a finger. It's very cool. Because Charlie Benante, some people say he was the first one. But uh, in my personal opinion, what he did uh, was not done with the same uh, quality of Sandoval. Nothing wrong with Charlie, it's great. But Sandoval really did it very, very good. I mean, if you hear the Terrorizer album, I suggest you to check it out. The first one is very, very well done. Okay, what happens now? The blast beat goes everywhere in the United States. The death metal scene, okay? We start with bands like Obituary, Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation. And what happens is, okay, Obituary, they don't play blast beat. They doesn't play blast beat. But we, if, if we talk about Cannibal Corpse, they had their own way to play blast beat. This is really curious because uh, especially for the guys like me, when I was hearing the CD, you could hear like uh, a nuclear war happening, okay? Because what Paul does is playing 16 notes between the hands, uh, sorry, with the hands and with the feet. And it sounds like... It's called... It is called the bomb blast because it sounds like a war. Okay, so... This, this, is, this beat is interesting. Right hand on the snare, left hand on the hi-hat. This is the opposite of this one. You know why? This is easy. Because the first thing you do, it's like... You just try to change. So in the normal blast beat, we have the snare in the up beat. Instead of the bomb blast, we have the snare on the down beat. So what, is that finished yet? The band Suffocation, they tried another way to do it. You know, for the, if you want to do the um, bomb blast, you have to do it with very fast feet. Suffocation did it in this way, another way. So, okay. Funny thing, this, is, this was called for many years the Suffo Blast, like Suffocation. And this one... This was the Cannibal Blast. It's really interesting. Before being called the Bomb Blast, because it was underground music, so people was, you know, they, they were hearing like the CD, blah, 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 yeah, the Cannibal Blast. Yeah, this is the Suffolk Blast. You know, many things changing. What happened next? The blast beat. It was incorpor incorporated in the black metal scene. This is really interesting. The black metal scene before, you know, it was like. <laughs> wanted to speed it up. One interesting thing they discovered is like they could double the hands splitting the notes with the feet. So instead of doing they could do and with this one you can last much longer. So for example very cool because many bands they started to play this way and for example they started to be all over <laughs> the most extreme the better as far as that I remember the first album with all blast beats it's Panzer Division Marduk from a band called Marduk I never heard anything like that before I was like 17 or 18 years old and I was like yeah let's hear the first song Put the second one. Okay, let's go with the third one. But it sounds very cool, very cool. All the sounds of the war, you know, machine gun, tra -tra 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 -tra, and this drum blasting all over. What happens, you know, with the years passing by, so many, you know, people were starting to use both. I would say that Pete Sandoval, when he joined Morbid Angel, he learned to play double bass. So he learned it right after the bomb. Okay, so Pete Sandoval is famous for doing both, actually. If you check him out, he's always... Both, switching, over and over. Instead, uh, Paul from Cannibal Corpse is doing all this. And also, if you want to check somebody, for example, uh, Inferno from Behemoth, he's playing the... Two-footed blast. Also, this is something cool. 
when uh, the Derek Roddy book came out, the names of the blast they were like printed forever. So you have the blast beat, the economy blast, the bomb blast. Uh, so we have something really cool. It's called the gravity blast. You know, I'm not a big fan of it, but I, I, I'm don't know really. I'm not playing it at all, but I want to show you. It's done with a trick of the rim in the head, you know. Like the one-handed roll. You can hear it. It's very low, so people when do it, they really trigger. So it sounds like it's it's a little bit different from the others because the other ones I believe they have more power. That's why I say I'm, I'm old school guy because I like the blast, yeah, the blast beats done in that way. Uh, what else? Yeah, also bands like Dillinger's Escape Plan, they invented those kind of blasts. For example, Chris Penny is doing this one. Very, very fast. So, there are many ways to play the blast beat. Uh, what I like, really, I still like, is the kind of a grindcore blast beat. So, you, you can say, what? What? The grindcore blast beat is this. The more noise, the better. This is what I really love. I mean, I'm a big fan of bands like Napalm, Napalm Dead, I love it. And I, I believe, you know, I love it. When it's, maybe it's slower, but I believe it's heavier. I've been doing different, really different kind of stuff. Uh, for example, in February I was touring with Visions.